Hello, and thanks for joining us on the podcast that discusses all things gaming. Coming to you from the home of Gen Con and the gaming capital of the world, this is The Established Facts. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Established Facts. This is episode 99. This is day one of Indie PopCon 2015, actually. Yeah, Yeah, man. Give it up for Indie PopCon. Everybody in the... We're hanging out in the food court at the Indiana Convention Center and uh, interrupting several people's peaceful lunches or dinners at this point. Yeah, it's... As I think it's like five o'clock or around that time. It's lunch if you wake up at dessert. That's... Yeah. Well, you know... When you're a third shifter like me and you wake up at 1 o'clock, it's breakfast. But people don't really understand that, so it's okay. So, we have a very special episode uh, for you guys today. Uh, we actually have a couple uh, really awesome guests on our show. Uh, and we will go ahead and let them introduce themselves, starting to my right. Hi, I'm Will Helfrick. I'm a developer at Double Bomb Games. I'm Dave Vachero, also a developer at Double Bomb Games. I'm Lance Heinzelman. I'm just awesome. <laughs> I'm Josh Dimery, and I'm not a developer of Double Bomb Games. That's right. And this, of course, is your host, Big Don, from The Established Facts. For all of you out here in the wonderful food court, uh, we are The Established Facts, and uh, we are a local gaming podcast that discusses all things gaming, since I didn't get a chance to do my intro. Uh, we, uh, we have the pleasure of having uh, the two developers from Double Bomb is it interactive? It is interactive, that's but Will said games, so I went with it. Okay, well, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. It's your company. <laughs> yeah. So at any point, you can change the name. Yeah, we'll just change We're it to Double Bomb we'll... LLC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> incorporated. So, uh, incorporate. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> .org. That's it. <laughs> corp. We're the corp. <laughs> so, uh, Will, Dave, if you don't mind... Kind of tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what you're doing here at Indie PopCon on day one. Um, we are a, an indie duo. It's just us two in this uh, little adventure. And uh, we're, uh, we're from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, we both have normal nine-to-five jobs, but we do our, our passions, what we truly love, on the sides in the, in the morning, in the evening, in our sleep, all, just all of the time uh, working on this game. Um, and we've been doing this for about five months now. And what are you developing? What game are you developing? Uh, the game we were making is called All Things Go Boom. It's a tank party game. Uh, supposed to play it on your couch and Very blow cool. people up. Very cool. On yeah. your couch. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because actually that leads us right into our versus topic. So awesome segue, Dave. That didn't sound stage too Not at all. Thank you. Thank you. So for those of you who are not familiar with the established facts here at Indie PopCon, we do a versus topic at the beginning of our episode that leads into a discussion topic. And so our versus topic uh, for this episode 99 of the established facts is couch gaming versus desk gaming. And what we mean by that is couch gaming would be a party game, something that you would invite your friends over and you're sitting down. And if it's a video game, perhaps like Buzz on the PlayStation or the Xbox, uh, or all things go boom on the PC, sitting on your couch with your controller in your hand and your friends by your side blowing each other to bits, versus desk gaming, which is very similar, only it's more of a satellite community. You have people from all over the place, similar to League of Legends or something like that, where you have friends and guilds and you play games together, just not in the same location. So what we're going to do for uh, Dave and Will, who are you know, not used to this kind of thing. We're going to go down the table, uh, and we'll start with Will. Actually, you know what? We'll go start at the other end, so just like when we play games, you guys can kind of see how it works. Josh, couch, or desk? I'm definitely a couch gamer. Lance? I'm going to ride the fence on this one. Oh, of course you are. All right. 
I feel like I have to say couch because that's what our game is right well, now, but I go. mostly play online games. Okay. The desk. All right. Will? Yeah, I, I play both for sure, but I mean, one of the reasons we're developing a couch game is there's a lack of them because we like playing them, but there aren't that All right. many. So you would say more couch than desk, but kind of on the fence I'm as on well. The fence. All right. Well, it looks like this is an on the fence crowd. It's not yeah. lonely anymore. I know, right? There's three seats on the fence today. Um, I am. I'm definitely a couch. I uh, I enjoy not only sitting on the couch and playing games on the couch, but having friends there with me when I do it. Lots of Mario Party and uh, Mario Kart and things like that. So. Josh, why do you like sitting on the couch and playing games with your buddies? Well, much like we'll discuss at a later time, uh, I'm, I'm definitely the extrovert, at least in my family, uh, and many of our friends are extroverts as well. And because of that, you get recharged by having people around. So someone who's satellite at a desk location, uh, you don't get the same experience, at least I don't, uh, when gaming with said person. Whereas when we're on the couch, you know, we get to yell at each other, uh, make sure the other person doesn't throw and break our controller. Mike Massey, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, just, just in general, that, that interaction is more personal because they're right there. And uh, Diablo 3 is one that, that comes to mind. My, my wife has never really been into kind of those fantasy type video games. She's been very much into Mario. But we've sat down and played Diablo quite a few times with uh, Lance and his wife, Vanessa. Uh, just because it's a lot of fun to have people around and you know watch watch things blow up together, it's it's pretty entertaining. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Dave as our first fence sitter. Uh, Dave, why why do you justify kind of both sides of that coin? Well, um, I would say even as a PC gamer, I don't enjoy playing PC games alone. I still need to be playing them online using TeamSpeak or whatever and, and talking to people. Um, otherwise, I just, I just start to not enjoy it as much. And I think that's because growing up, I enjoyed playing games like Mario with, uh, with two players, um, mostly my cousins. Um, and I think, uh, I, I think even when I'm on the PC playing those games online, I still consider it kind of like a couch game. You're just, uh, just in a different environment, really. But it's kind of almost the same feeling. You just can't share pizza. Yeah, that's true. Lance? Well, as discussed in previous podcasts, I discovered that I am an ambivert. It's both an introvert and an extrovert. So I get energy from being around people as well as from just being by myself and enjoying time. Um, So couch games are great when I want to hang out with my friends, play something that we can all play together, uh, except for the Super Mario Brothers games that are new because those are friendship killer games. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But games like Buzz, games like Mario Party... Even to the extent Halo, when you're playing with your friends, not against your friends. But I also enjoy time alone. I like to play by myself because then I'm challenged mentally to play the game just for the game's sake. But it also means if I'm sitting at a desk playing, that I'm not working. So I have that much time that I'm at work getting paid to not do anything. (laughs) Well, there is that, I guess, yeah. Will? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm... I'm definitely more of an introvert, so that's where I think that's where I do. I definitely enjoy, you know, occasionally just uh, playing a game uh, on my own at my own pace. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the most fun I have playing multiplayer games is definitely when we can do it all in the same room, which is where the that's e- most certainly easiest to do in a couch situation. Uh, Otherwise, you have to have a LAN party and drag a bunch of computers together, which which is a, which is a similar which is something thing, we have done a is, lot too. Yeah, it's, too. it's definitely great to do. But uh, so yeah, so I, I, I like them both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, I guess I guess for me, kind of the the realization of uh, of being a couch person is just having kind of that rotating group of friends that you enjoy having playing games with you all the time. And, uh, Will, you kind of brought up a good point when uh, you were talking about, you know, you're kind of more of an introvert, so it's a little bit more comfortable sometimes to be able to sit in the privacy of your own home. And even with, uh, from what I've experienced with a lot of people who are introverts, even when it comes to uh, 
playing games with other people, it's usually the same kind of tight-knit group of friends that you, that you play a lot of the same games with and stuff. Uh, and I am definitely kind of the opposite side of that coin. I'm a much bigger extrovert, so I'm, you know, sure, come on over, bring your buddies. Yeah, I've never met them, but we'll sure. play a game together anyway. It doesn't matter to me. So when, when I play games like Halo... Uh, or something like that. It's a lot more fun for me when I have my friends there because you get that reaction when, you know, oh, you snipe me without looking or something, you know, just something similar to that. And uh, that's kind of what I experienced hanging out at your booth for a few minutes, just kind of watching, um, watching your game is, is uh, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's colorful, it pops, it's, it's a really vibrant looking game. It looks great. And you said you've only thank been you. working on it for yeah, five, five months. Five months, yeah. So, um, thank you. It definitely looks fun, uh, and Josh and I kind of did a little bit of a hey, let's hang out and get to meet each other for a minute before we before we got up here. But uh, you know, it's definitely a game that I'm going to go back and I'm going to sit down and, and and play a little bit, and you know, maybe I'll just grab my chair from our booth and I'll just. No, we have two. What? They have two. Well, yeah, I, you I bring two. I guess over. I we got yeah. four. We got four. We'll have our own couch. We'll have our own couch. You have your own couch. <laughs> we'll make our own couch. Is there a Walmart? That's right. Here? Real just friends share the couch. So, Lance. Oh, I was just I was just going to ask since I haven't been to the booth, can you describe the game for us? So the game is a uh, is a top down twin stick shooter. So um, you play as a tank and you. Uh, your, the sole purpose, despite the game mode you might be playing, is to always be shooting the other people and blowing them up. So there's these modifiers that you can get within the uh, the, the environment that um, makes your tank cannon crazy. So you might start with a basic machine gun, but then it can become a shotgun, heat-seeking, incendiary machine gun that explodes on impact as well, too. Um, we just want to have this high level of franticness constantly. Um, I think that's what helps generate the excitement that you were seeing at the booth. Um, people just like out of nowhere blowing up, getting shot off the screen. Um, and just sometimes they recover themselves and it's like this whole big thing like, oh, I made it back on. But then they just blow up like seconds later anyway because it's just constant explosions. So you, um, you found a way to combine Contra with a tank game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that's definitely so it's definitely like a shoot em, shoot em up <laughs> game. Yeah. So, um, as gamers, kind of one thing that, that uh, I have noticed, um, and uh, I think this kind of gets us into a little bit of a discussion topic that we can kind of alternate and uh, evolve uh, as we, as we kind of talk together. But uh, when it comes to video gaming, I think is, is probably, I mean, really it's, whether it be PC or console, it's kind of the only genre of gaming where you have an option to not be in the same room and playing the game. So, so in general, do you guys on the panel feel like that helps or kind of hurts the genre of gaming when it comes to, when it comes to you know, being able to play that game and be social? Uh, this just got really serious. Well, now. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to bring some... It's, it's, that's a tough call because... Um, I don't know. My, my <laughs> initial gut reaction is like, yeah, if you're not in the same room, you're not feeling the same emotions, but there's people that have gotten married off of World of Warcraft, um, so there's something to be said there if people are able to meet. Did they meet after the wedding? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. I know, I think there was a few that they actually got married in the game. I think yeah. like they like threw a ceremony. Wow. They may have been married in real life and then threw a ceremony ceremony in the game. Um, so when you see something like that happening, uh, you can't deny that uh, there is some still some level of emotions that you're feeling um, like through uh, through a like a mumble server or whatever. So future expansion to uh, all things go boom would be the wedding ceremony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have wedding tanks. Um, they, they they shoot rice instead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be the most impressive bouquet throw. Yeah, and they get anyone's into, ever seen. They get into the tank limo and then they they go off and there you go. Yeah, Josh. <laughs> well, you know, as much as I may prefer the couch game, I think I think it did open up a new realm of gaming. And uh, one one way I can think of this would be. In those rare instances that someone on a military base would get to be able to play a game, um, I say rare because I don't know exactly how rare it is, I don't, or how common. 
But it does give that person the opportunity to possibly get online with someone else. Now, granted, it may not show their real location, but it doesn't necessarily matter. It's yeah. another opportunity for interaction with someone that cannot be in the same location. Um, with the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live, it allows for those, as many people joke, those 12-year-old Japanese kids to beat us up in Call of Duty. But it also allows for you to you know, play with your best friend who left for college. Yeah. Um, something that you kind of wish, wish you had that opportunity on the couch. You still can get it utilizing you know, the internet and the technology that's available. I, I also, I totally agree with you, but to kind of throw a wrench into it, I also feel like there are times, and this could just be because I am an extrovert, uh, that I feel like there is a lot missed when you're sitting behind a PC. There's, you know, you always hear stories about, you know, well, I, you know, befriended this person on Facebook, and then I met them, and they weren't really even the same person, and things like that. And there's, there's a level of kind of there's kind of this shroud of secrecy behind being able to play a PC game, which can be a safety net for some, but then kind of a crutch for others where, you know, it's an ability to be able to, to play games but not really be genuine to who you are if you are sitting at a table playing a game. Go ahead, Lance. I'll go you one further and say that there's a, an ability when you play online games that you might not even be playing with your group of friends. Like yeah. when, I, when I play online poker, I'm playing with people around the world. Now, I love playing with, with you guys, with the Demerys and the Martyrs and my friends here locally, but sometimes I just want to take other people's money. <laughs> you know, I like playing with people from around the world. We'll never, ever meet, but still, you get, you get right. to make friendships that way, so I expand the world that way. There's a, uh, there's a guy that... Um, we were playing uh, Battlefield. It's actually Will and I. We were playing Battlefield Three uh, shortly after it came out, and uh, we were in a, a clan called the Honey Badgers. And um, this—I mean—that was a big thing at That's the time, awesome. or whatever. <laughs> um, and this guy just asked to join up, and then before we knew it, we like—he was just hanging out with us all the time on on Teamspeak or whatever. Right. Um, but he uh, he moved up to Pittsburgh and he started working where where we were at. And it was it was like we just developed this crazy friendship online. Um, turned out he wasn't a psycho so that was great like he got up here that's and he was good. a really cool oh, dude and we got along great but how did he know you were from pittsburgh that's yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um but the other thing is too like we did like skype calls um when we were playing too so we had like video oh, streaming cool. as well um so we kind of it was it's a little awkward at first because you're just yeah. like i'm just like i remember telling my wife uh like i felt like i was going on this date with this, <laughs> this guy online just like to play video games it was really weird but um yeah we became really great friends so and we still are. That's good. That's good. Well, and, and, and we've discussed several times. We have a, uh, a great friend of ours on the podcast. His name's Derek. And uh, we met him very similarly, but through tabletop role play games uh, at Gen Con several years ago. 2006, I believe, is when it was. And, uh, and because of the relationship that we built with him, just seeing him once or twice a year... Um, really grew that relationship and he ended up moving here and he owns a house literally like two houses down from from Josh so you know and we're great friends and, and we game together all the time and he's actually here uh, at the con with his own booth and stuff booth like that booth 123 booth Palagane 123 Press. Palagane Press if you're ever looking for a universal storytelling system or role play system that uses deck of cards anyway so <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, you know I feel like to an extent most of us up here are at least half extrovert and half introvert. I really want to hear from Will's perspective when it comes to kind of, kind of being uh, very, a, a lot more comfortable with having that distance and stuff. Kind of um, like what is the draw to wanting to be more of a desk gamer than, than a couch gamer? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the biggest advantages is, is the accessibility of it. It's you don't have to be on. You don't have to be on a schedule or schedule when you're going to do it. You know, you can play anytime you want. So if you only have a limited amount of time, that's not a problem. So there's a there's logistical advantages to it. But uh, I do. I mean, I do think it's more fun uh, when you have that opportunity to play and uh, play together as a group. Because in large part, because 
when you're playing anonymously, people behave differently. It's usually not as friendly of a match. 